Welcome back to Worlds 2011. It's day two. I'm alongside the leader in the main event, the leader in just about everything, David Kaplan of Canada. David, tell us a bit about you. What's your history in the game? Uh, I started playing in Urza's Block. I played almost strictly vintage and legacy mm -hmm. for quite a few years. In 2007, I think it was, I top eighted Grand Prix Chicago, which was a legacy GP, qualifying me for nationals due to total rating and uh, the Pro Tour. So I got a little taste of standard block and limited, and I decided to start doing drafts online at home. And uh, ever since, I just do them on weeknights, and I could travel to vintage and legacy events on weekends. So it worked very well. Okay. Now David played mono red in standard yesterday to six and zero, and also three and zero in the Magic Online Championship before losing the last round to Rejig. So he shares the lead there. This morning he's won his first draft round again with some red cards. So you might be thinking mono red, it's got to be pretty straightforward, right? I just burn some things and turn some creatures sideways. But there's a lot to Mono Red. We're gonna to go to the big board and take a look at David's deck. So let's have a look. We begin with the creature suite. And here we go. We've got three Grim Lava Mancer, four of Strong Hurt Noble, four Goblin Fire Slinger, Singleton Spike Shot Elder, four Stormblood Berserker, and then four Chandra's Phoenix. So we start at this end, the M12, Grim Lava Mancer. Are you gonna get creatures into your graveyard, things in your graveyard? You, with this list, you definitely do. Gut Shot costing zero mana often gets in your graveyard. Galvanic Glass is very cheap. Your creatures die fairly easily because they're very low drops, <laughs> and you really don't play, you don't play any four drops, so things, four drops never really go into your, like, you can't cast them, they don't go to your yard, so these things all end up in your graveyard eventually, so that thing gets activated quite a bit. So there's fuel for the fire yeah. in that one. Okay, Strong Hurt Noble, again, 1-1 one, one for 1. How relevant is this Strong Hurt Noble can't be blocked by humans? It, it's extremely relevant. This card is basically the Numa Mongoose to my threshold. Oh. When you play it, you remove all their creatures, you get in, it just eventually wins the game on its own. It just keeps growing and growing. Half their creatures can't block it, and the other half you just remove. Awesome, the MVP, who knew? <laughs> now, Goblin Fire Slinger, you'd really want the words creature or in the bit that says deals one damage to target <laughs> player, yeah. but it's in the deck, why? Uh, it's, it's, very, it's an extra one drop. It's not the best one drop, but it's an extra one. Uh, it normally deals about three to four damage over the course of the game, but it also enables your Stormblood Berserkers, which is very important in a hyper-aggressive build. Uh, okay. It can also target yourself to prevent timely reinforcements, which occurred a couple times. So it's, it's been quite useful, actually. Okay, now traditionally, mono red decks want to be very consistent. So four of this, four of that, four of that. One. Why? I think you just combine this card with the three Grim Lava Mancers oh, to okay. make a four of. Because running four Grim Lava Mancers will deplete your graveyard way too quickly. So we were talking about either running two and two or three and one. We ended up with three and one and it worked all right. All right, now you've already mentioned that the key thing about Stormblood Berserker is the Bloodthirst, which you're gonna get activated with your fire Yeah. Slinger. The problem with Stormblood Berserker is it is Vapor Snag is very popular right now. Sure. And uh, it takes quite a bit to get it active. Sometimes you need to gut shot your opponent or waste a burn spell. And if you get Vapor Snagged, uh, it's, it's a pretty big tempo loss, so he gets boarded out sometimes against those kind of decks. Okay, and then our final creature, Flying and Haze, Chandra's Phoenix, and I guess the big thing here is that you get to keep bringing it back. Yeah, it's, it, it's been quite impressive. I recorded it a couple times. Most of the time, it's just a 2-2 flyer in the air that just gets in, gets in, gets in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it snipes Planeswalkers, sometimes it just goes to the face. Just a great card. Yeah, Now, solid. bottom row, let's talk about all the spells. They're the creature suite, here we come. And we start off with an honorary red card, the Artifact, Shrine of Burning Rage. What is your current record for counters on a Shrine of Burning Rage at this World Championships? I think my opponent conceded at 17 life when I had it on 12 or 13. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it really does deal a lot. And it, for people who haven't played with it or against it, perhaps who aren't that familiar with Stand, if they're more limited players, the thing is, it goes up so quickly, it feels a lot of these ticking up cards, you think, Oh, they're going to take a while, yeah. but this really ratchets up, doesn't it? Absolutely, and the fact that you can play this on turn two instead of something else, and then you can start removing their creatures if you're playing against another aggressive deck, this thing will just build up. For example, against Illusions, you play this on turn two, mm -hmm. if they tap out, remove all their creatures, eventually it's at 13 and there's nothing they can do about it, they just die to it. All right, back we go for one of the most expensive cards in the deck, which seems a very odd thing to <laughs> yeah. say, about two and a red for Volt Charge. Tell us what that does for you. Um, well, it's very powerful with both Stormblood Berserkers and Stormcrypt Noble, as well as Shrine of Burning Rage. Uh, it's a three damage spell. It, 
To be honest, it often gets boarded out. It's probably one of the worser cards in the deck, but it has some tr tremendous power if you can cast it on turn three after a Noble and a Berserkers. Okay, now Arc Trail, when we were in Scars of Mirrodin Limited, this was pretty much the simplest two for one in the history of the yeah. game. Is it a two for one in standard? No. Uh, All right. Sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's two damage to a player, one damage to a Birds of Paradise, two damage to a player, one damage to something else. Uh, but it, it's still quite good. And when you do get the two for one, it's it feels pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. All right. Now a card that's been awesome forever yeah. in the history of the game, Incinerate. This time an M12 version. Yeah. Still great? Still great. Three damage, two mana. It's been good all weekend. Normally goes to the face. Tell me about this regenerate clause, because it's one of the few burn spells that says you can't have the creature regenerate. Have you have you done a thrun the last roll? No, you can't do anything like that, can you? That's the trouble, right? So uh, does it ever get used? As it hasn't. So far, it's mostly gone to the face or killed a Blade Splicer token or something like sure. that. Yeah. Okay, then we've got Gutshot using Phyrexian Manor, of course. Um, and this is a card that's seeing a ton of play in all kinds of decks. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great tempo card. Because this deck taps out so quickly on turn one, two, and three, you want to be able to remove their Birds of Paradise or their own Storm Perk Noble or whatever for zero mana. Mm -hmm. It's so worth the two life. It's a great card. And then finally, we've got Galvanic Blast. Um, and again, super cheap, super efficient. Just three, though. You couldn't yeah. squeeze in the fourth? No, uh, it was kind of between that and Incinerate, and we just kind of wanted to vary it up a little bit. Three damage versus two damage. This is good at killing Mirren Crusader. This kills the, the Blade Splicer tokens. So we just kind of varied it a little, just like... Okay. Creatures. Now, if you're thinking, how's he casting all this stuff? Well, we didn't put up 21 mountains. I think you can remember that at home. Pretty simple mana base. But what about the sideboard? Let's take you all the way across the wall and let's dig up what we've got in the sideboard. So there you see, we've got a couple of Cop of the Hammer, two more of the Arc Trail, Traitorous Blood, for dismember the full package there because you never care about life, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Is that right? And then full Vulshock Refugee, a single Manic Vandal. Now tell me about this card because I know that between going 6 and 0 in standard and then setting up for the Magic Online, you had a little change round yeah. in the deck. Tell us about that. Um, well, we saw a lot of Templar Steel from the Channel Fireball crew and uh, we decided that maybe some of the online players would also be playing Templar Steel. So and I was only siding in three dismembers most of the time, so I just decided to switch one with one. Uh, we didn't really know what to put as the last slot, and we made it Matic Vandal uh, just to deal with Batter Skull against the Wolf Run decks. So. Okay, now, Canadian Magic right now. Yeah. We've got Rich Hone here having just won a GP and doing very well. He's historically been well regarded throughout the community, of yes. course. But you've got the Canadian national team doing very well. Yes. We've got you leading the Magic Online champs, leading the World Championship. What's going on in Canadian Magic? Uh, it's actually a, it's very good. Canadian Magic's very good right now. There's a lot of communication between provinces, which didn't exist before. Uh -huh. It used to be Ontario and Quebec, Little Pockets, Alberta. Everyone's in their own little group. Now people are communicating a lot due to uh, work by Karyong Tom with Mana Deprived, uh, which is a website about Canadian Magic. Uh -huh. and they, they've done a great job in influencing Canadian Magic players to talk to each other, and it's really helped. Well, it certainly seems to be paying dividends. There you see the mono red deck of David Kaplan. It's Magic Night in Canada. For David Kaplan, I'm your host, Rich Hagen, saying bye.